Are you free or are you an escaped fugitive? Are you free or are you an escaped fugitive? The most important thing that you and I have to pay attention to is our heart. Never get comfortable with the placement of your heart. In every phase and every every level of growth that we enter into with the Lord, that's not it. It's not the end. We're good. We must always allow the Holy Spirit to evaluate our hearts. We must always take heed and take note and ask the Holy Spirit to help us to be sensitive and aware of how we react to situations and in areas where we behaved unseemly, we responded to a situation with impatience or unkindness or we were miffed. <laughs> there is such a word. We were miffed. <laughs> um, because it all ties to the heart. Some will keep that stiff upper lip in a situation. But why? Sometimes it's not necessary. And so we must always watch our heart. Are you free or are you an escape fugitive? Let me tell you what I mean by that. Sometimes you've been in situations around people that hurt you deeply and you left. Perhaps they left and perhaps you left. You left the situation but you brought all the pain with you and so what happens is sometimes when you stay too long where the Lord was telling you to leave you'll find you became accustomed to that environment you became accustomed to that level of harshment harsh harshness miss slash maltreatment you're used to walking on eggshells. You're used to having to defend yourself. You flinch when no one has their hands raised because of where you come from. And so even though you've distanced yourself from the situation, you in turn become the environment you were in. And so you'll find that you're still imprisoned in your mind by what happened to you. You're still imprisoned in your mind by what you experienced. And now you begin to live this way. You're no longer in the environment, but you are still a prisoner. You are not free. You're an escaped fugitive. An escaped fugitive never can be at rest truly because they're always expecting something. They're expecting to get caught one day. And so they live live a certain kind of life that even though they're in society there's certain norms and things that we would take for granted those of us who are not you know expecting the cops to come and get us we're not we don't live that way we don't have that level of tension and anxiety and behaviors going into a store if you see a police officer you're not going to freeze up and turn back around because you think you might be identified because you're free but a person who's not free a fugitive, an actual fugitive would not go to these places. They'll be tense and, and they'll be expecting stuff and they sleep. I imagine they will be sleeping lightly. And they'll be suspicious of everybody. This is how many people who have been hurt, this is how they live. They still carry the torch and the shackles of the relationship or relationships they were in. So even though they are free, they are in, on edge. They cannot just enjoy relationships the right way because now they are actually, a lot of times they become the one that begin to mistreat other people. They will have flashbacks about something that happened in a conversation in which the person's really just being honest and truthful or the person is truly means nothing. This person really loves you, but you can't trust them because what they did and what they sound like and a smell, a sound, a, a way they did things reminds you of the past. And so you find a lot of people that were abused and that were 
you know, emotionally abused. Excuse me, guys. I don't know if you heard my tummy. <laughs> but they were emotional abused, emotionally abused, and they were mentally abused or whatever it may be. When they don't give that pain over to the Lord and allow the Lord to help them with a process they will begin to now mistreat other people and they will feel like they're not treating the person as badly because they're not doing it to the degree or to the extent or with the same severity as the person who hurt them but nonetheless it is the same thing hurt is hurt you know if i whether i stuck you with a small uh you know stabbed you with a butter knife versus a kitchen knife versus a butcher knife it's still a knife and it's going to hurt right so sometimes people will measure the pain that they afflicted on others by saying you don't you didn't get it as bad as i did and i see a lot of parents will do that you know my my style of abuse is a lot lighter than what my parents did no, but what are you talking about you know what i'm saying so it is very important that you understand that God knows and saw what happened to you. Some may blame God for what happened to them because they feel like, God, you're supposed to protect me, but you allowed this. Some feel guilt because they didn't obey the Lord because a lot of times there would have been a situation where the Lord was showing you all along before this person became who they were. Whether it was a husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, ex in whatever capacity, friend, your leaders, all right? Um, and even your children. It could even be your own family, right? And so what happens is... They experience these things and then they move on. But now they become the abusers because they're not healed. They don't want to give the pain over to the Lord. Many, many Christians stay bound and many have died and gone into the pits of hell, guys. They're not in heaven because they refuse to forgive. They don't want to do that. They forgive on their terms. They do things their way. And they don't obey God. And so they take malice in malice to hell with them. <laughs> because the reason why people don't want to deal with forgiveness is because in order for us to in order for us to truly be healed from her, a part of that process is to forgive that person. And a lot of people don't want to do it. And so because they don't want to do it, they actually leave that seed of rejection and hurt planted in them. And then they try to move forward with other people, but they're still damaged. So they conduct themselves not as a free person in Christ, but an escaped fugitive. And so because they're easily offended, they're easily irritable, they, they're looking over their shoulder. That means that everything could be a situation and they make other people around them uncomfortable and everyone is trying to adjust so they're not so jumpy and trying to prove to them that they're not going to turn them in because they're escaped, but they're not free. So they continue the cycle. They pass on the baton. The seeds that were planted in them, they allow it to grow and to sprout in their hearts. And now they begin to taint and damage other people around them. How many of you have met people that will come to you and they'll tell you something about how terribly they had it in their lives and how they were mistreated and what happened to them? And then you befriend them. You may even end up in a relationship with them. You may invite them around your family. You find this person has these nasty little ways and they have some ways that's horrible. And suddenly you can't reason and rational and rationalize with this person because they feel like you're attacking them when all you're doing is loving them. And they imagine these situations, that things that you did when you did not mean to do it, but you cannot get through to them because they're an escaped fugitive. They're not free. 
You'll find the person that will say some people kicked them out of their houses and now they're on the street and then you give them free room and board and they'll come into your house and do the unthinkable and blame you for it. You'll find people that say, I don't have anything, I have nothing. And then you, you let them use your car and, and, and you help them and they will be ungrateful and they will, they will wreck your car and say, it's not my car. Leave the car dirty, but have an attitude. If you say, hey, can you clean up when you're done? They will internalize that and think about, oh, this is why I don't want to be around people because of whatever. And then you're going, guy, I just gave you the car. I just need to clean it up. I've spoken to you about it. And this is why. Why? Because this person is an escape fugitive. There'll be a person that's telling you how they were mistreated and dogged out by this man or dogged out by this woman and how badly they did them. And you will be loyal and faithful and love them and kind and they will mistreat you. They will take your love for granted. They will be doing the things that they said was done to them and hurt you and act like they don't know what's going on. And so, my brothers and sisters, it's a, why does that happen, you think? As I said before, they escaped, but they don't realize during their relationship with this person or in this ministry, hallelujah, even in ministry, things would have happened in the ministry and they escaped. And so they're like, I'm going to start my own ministry and I'm going to do my own thing. So they go and they start a church or they may start a channel, but they have a lot of resentment in their hearts. And so they'll be preaching and teaching from resentment. You will find they will destroy people. They will destroy their congregants because everything they see, they still, they act as if they, they are so hypersensitive to everything because they're not healed. They will preach and teach and prophesy from a, a manipulative, deceptive spirit. Because all they want to do is prove to those people that, see, I made it. But they're still a prisoner. They're still prisoners because you'll find that they're not teachable. They're not reachable. They become a uh, narcissist. They are on a power trip. They want to prove something. And if someone tries to correct them, they will have a flashback of what happened to them at their last ministry. And they'll destroy you because they are an escaped fugitive. They're not free. I'm going to encourage you to be free today. How do you become free? By bringing that weight and that poison of hurt and pain and rejection to the Lord. Laying it before his feet. Be willing to follow his, follow his, the process of healing. He knows it's a process. There are these insane church folks that will tell you that forgiveness is the man who slapped you in your face last night. You forgive them and then you go out to the Texas Roadhouse the same day. And if you can't do that, you, you have forgiveness, unforgiveness. They'll tell you you need to forgive the woman that slept with your husband before the sun go down and still go to church with her. And I want y'all to do a solo for the upcoming Palm Sunday service. That's insane. You have a right to want to drop kick her with some Timberlands on. You have a right to feel this way. Brother, you have a right to want to knock that brother out. This is a natural human feeling. Hurt is a natural human feeling and the Lord knows that it is a process. But we must make it up in our minds that Lord, I want at this... I, I don't want to really forgive this person. You got to be real with your father. But Lord, I know, I know that I've got to bring this to you. God, help me. And I'm here to tell you, he'll take you through the process that will be painful. It will be hard and difficult. But if you trust him and put your hand in his and let him help you, let him walk you through it. I'm here to tell you, you can be restored. So that when the Lord takes you through the process, the process, you will be free. You'll be able to enter relationships, friendships, 
do your ministry, whatever platform the Lord places you on, as a clean vessel who carries no remorse or hurt or pain against those who have hurt you or resentment towards them. You will not jump and you will not pull away and you will not, you will not handle people in a way based on what the last person did to you because you had a, a flashback of something or this seems to be the same way. Do not poison God's children on your platforms and, and hurt other people and destroy someone that truly loves you. Because you still have the shackles and you're still in the prison clothes from the last relationship. Are you free or are you an escaped fugitive? Are you living free in Christ in the newness and his transforming power in your life? That not only you're not walking around with an entitled me, me, me spirit. You're not walking around with, let me tell you about my story and where I've been and why I deserve. After all I've been through. You put your head back and say, after all I've been through. And I'm not saying this in an unkind way, but there's a lot of people that walk around with the, after all I've been through badge. And you need to understand, but know who the sun sets free is free indeed. What you've been through should be a firm foundation and what gives you the strength to help others, not to expect others to rally around you and pat you on the back and you exacerbate and turn into a little monster. But rather, you want to be free. You want to be free. You want to be able to carry the baton of where you can reach out and bring others up and your test becomes your testimony. There are many who have escaped. You're an escaped fugitive and you are destroying other people because you, you left all the hurt behind but you brought the seeds with you. And now you're making huge oak trees of resentment, malice, bitterness, strife, passive aggressive. It's you just you're full of it. And it grows and it harvests and it produces fruit. And then now you take the fruit and you you pack it up and you're handing it out to other people. It's time to forgive guys truly. You have the choice to blame God, curse God, forgive your way, or you can choose to do things his way so you can be free. There are many Christians that your last breath, you're not going to be where you think you're going. Because you embrace the life of a fugitive. You chose to do things God's way. There's Your nobody way. who has a hateful, malicious heart that has not heard the voice of the Lord, who has not heard him speak to them and give them a check. And they didn't get that conviction for certain things that they do and how they think. Who have not heard the word of God about forgiveness and letting go. Who have not heard the parable of the wicked servant. The king and the wicked servant. They've heard this and they'll hear this message and they'll justify and say, it's not me. I've forgiven them. I forgive them, but I'll never forget. I forgive them, but. Forgiveness does not mean you both will be buddies or you will be buddies with them again. Forgiveness means that you let them go and you allow the Lord to let you see them through his eyes. When you close the door and you move ahead, you're not moving ahead with malice. And if they cross your heart, you can still pray for them in all sincerity. And one thing I would tell you, the Lord said to me that changed my life forever. And I don't want to get emotional, but when I hear it, it was so awesome. And I want to share it with you. I remember God says to me, will you forgive them? Arlene, will you forgive them? Not for them. But will you forgive them for me? 
Will you allow me to take you through the process to forgive them? Not for them, but will you forgive them for me, Arlene? And I bust out crying and was like, yes, Lord, of course, of course, for you, yes, anything. Because I love the Lord. Like, I love him so much. And I ask him to help me to really understand his love. He's so good to me, guys. He's so good to me. And I don't want to just have known him in theory and talking about him and miss being with him forever. And so, guys, you have to think that same way. I'm thankful that the Lord called me out of darkness. I'm thankful that he came and he got me. When I felt like I was going to just spiral and, and, and go back to my old ways. And I'm here to tell you the key to that is letting go and letting God. Do you hate someone enough to go to hell for them? Because that's what's going to happen. The word of God says, if you do not forgive, I will not forgive you. So you've been, if you've been holding unforgiveness against somebody... Since Michael Jackson was out in them silver socks, you have not been forgiven all this time and you're still alive, which means if you have passed away yesterday, you would not have been in eternal rest. Be free in Christ. Be free in Christ and not a fugitive. Let it go. I don't say it lightly, but let it go. Give it to God. Go through the process of forgiveness with him and watch what he's going to do with that pain. Watch what he's going to do. Watch how that pain, he will take it from you and give you beauty and anoint your face and give you a glow and a freedom. That you'll be able to look back and say, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. All right, guys. Peace.